Ridgecrest students, what is going on? We are back for our third week of virtual Wednesday nights. Obviously, it's not nighttime for me. Um, I just needed to get away for a minute. So I came back to our courtyard. I'm in a nice shaded area. There's vines and trees and everything all around me. Um, I just kind of thought, you know what? You guys have been sitting at home. You're probably just staring at each other and screens and there's a whole bunch of siblings and parents <coughs> telling you what to do and it's just loud and crazy and so I wanted to just give you a, a nice few minutes of peace, of nature, of just some tranquility. And if you're bored by that, it's okay. I've enjoyed it and you can just enjoy the video and what I'll talk about. But what I wanted to talk about this week is what's called solitude. And when you hear solitude, a lot of you think of that card game, now that's called solitaire, but solitude is this act of just getting alone by yourself and just enjoying um, being alone. And as Christians, for what that looks like for us as a spiritual discipline, is when we just get alone when it's just us and God and we see what God has to tell us uh, at that time. And so for many of you, solitude is not something that excites you. It's something that uh, you feel super lonely when you're in solitude. It's something where you feel like you're just sitting in a room by yourself. You feel like there's no point to it. And for a lot of us who are believers and are growing in our faith, sometimes we don't like solitude because we know God is, is going to reveal something to us. We know that God is going to maybe uncover a, a wound or a hurt in our life that we have to deal with, and we don't want to deal with that. And so we shy away from solitude for a lot of different reasons. But what we find is that it's one of the most beneficial spiritual disciplines. And a spiritual discipline is literally just something we do to grow in our relationship with God. There's a book called Celebration of Discipline that talks a lot about it, and it has a chapter on solitude. And it talks about how we as believers need to get away and spend time with just us and God so that we can grow in that relationship. And what we look at is when we look in God's Word is that there's even places where Jesus, as He was doing His earthly ministry, he, he got alone. He got away by himself. He practiced solitude, just him and the Father, in order to prepare for his ministry. Um, one, of the, one of the main places where he did that was actually at the very beginning of his ministry. If you remember, one of the first things that Jesus did uh, was go out and be tempted by the devil over and over again while he was out in the wilderness. But what you'll see in Matthew chapter 4 is that... <clears throat> He had to get some solitude before then to prepare for what he was about to go up against. It says in Matthew 4 verse 1, uh, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And then we get all into it. So we get into the temptation and all that stuff that happened. But the part that people just kind of breeze over and miss is that Jesus spent 40 days alone in the wilderness fasting and praying, being with God, saying, God, prepare me for what's about to happen. Prepare me for the temptation I'm about to fall under. And that's how he dealt with the devil. And as we know, we deal with the same temptations that Jesus did. And Jesus, who is 100% God and 100% man, said, you know what, this is such a big deal that I've got to dedicate some time to being alone with God to prepare for this world, to prepare for what Satan is trying to do to me. And so, how arrogant is it for us to think that we don't need to have that, that we don't need to practice solitude and growing in a relationship with Christ when we go up against the same enemy and the same temptations that Jesus did? And so, if you're, if you're like, okay, that makes sense, solitude's important, I'm going to get over the whole awkward sitting alone like a weirdo thing, I'm going to actually try it, well, that's fantastic. Um, here are some things that you could do. You know, right now, I'm in the church's courtyard. Um, I found a spot, a little corner by myself to just um, sit and be at peace and, and relax in front of the Lord. There's a, there is a place at your house for you. It may be the corner of your backyard. It could be a, like a porch swing. It could be um, your room, as long as you get rid of the distractions. It could be your closet. Um, you've just got to find some place where you cannot be distracted and that you can focus on you and the Lord and you asking and listening what he has for you and so what that may look like if you're one who's like who says you know I'm by myself this is great uh, but I'm laying there and I fall asleep well you probably need to sleep more and so we'll work on getting past that but what you do while you're in there 
is really up to you. And you can just sit and listen and try to hear what God is telling you. And, and so, so, so often we get so busy going from one thing to the other, to practice, to school, to other practice, to food, to family time, to homework, to bed, that we never give time, we never give God time to talk. And so solitude is really just an, an opportunity for you to just turn everything down and just hear what God has to say. Um, for some of you, it may be opening God's Word and saying, you know what, I'm going to read this passage for the next X amount of time, and I'm going to see what God has for me. But whatever you do, the whole purpose of it is not to accomplish anything, it's not to check anything off your list, it's just to spend time with God. And I know that right now a lot of you are spending most of your time just trying to kill time, whether it's through video games or busy schoolwork or eating or napping or whatever. Instead of just trying to kill time, let's set aside a time and say, you know what, I know that this has got to happen for my spiritual life. I know that if Jesus felt it was a necessity to spend time with you, then I need to do that as well. And say, God, I'm going to give this to you so that you do what you will with it. And I think what you'll find is that your faith will grow exponentially. God will grow you. He will show you some things that you have been hiding from, some things that have been calloused over that you don't even feel. Um, and some of that will be uncomfortable. But some of it will also be so joyous that you'll be able to really deal with things and think through things and, and listen to what God is telling you and grow through that. So this week could be a time where you take that next step into your, your walk with Christ and say, you know what, I actually enjoy spending time with God. I actually enjoy listening to Him and seeing what He has for us. And so that's my encouragement for you this week, is to go find that spot. Um, if, if you've got to go tell your siblings and your parents, hey, I've got to have some time by myself so I can spend time with God, I'm pretty sure they'll respect that. If not, go sit in your closet, lock the door, and you know they'll only think you're weird for a little while. But other than that, uh, some things that we're doing at Ridgecrest Students right now, we, we're trying to figure things out like you are. There's some different things that we're trying to uh, get going as far as social media and otherwise. Uh, we are posting a lot on Instagram and Facebook. Tell your parents, because we know you're not on Facebook, tell your parents we're doing stuff on Facebook. And um, there's a lot of things we're doing. Uh, Megan and Miss Jenna may be contacting high school girls soon. We're going to try to get together some kind of a Zoom Bible study for high school girls. If you're someone who likes to play video games, I'm talking with some people to try to figure out how we can all get together on some online multiplayer stuff. Uh, I'm just trying to hang out with you guys the best I know how. Um, I know we can't be with each other in the same room physically, um, but maybe we can hang out as I crush you in Fortnite or as I smoke you in Rocket League or make you cry like a little baby at FIFA. So if that's what it takes, I'm fine with that. Um, other than that, we're just trying to set some things up. Some of our life groups are starting to do uh, their life groups on Zoom, so be looking out for that. There's some different things we're trying to get towards to make sure that we are still acting and living and loving each other as a Ridgecrest family. And so if you have any ideas for that, I'd love to hear it. Text me. Um, if this whole quarantine coronavirus thing has been a real struggle for you, um, get in contact with me or Miss Jenna or Megan, and we'd love to talk with you through that and try to see if we can make things better or just be there so, for you to talk things out and we can listen. Um, if this has been <coughs> the greatest few weeks of your life and it's like extended vacation, that's really cool too. You can talk to us about that and we'll just, you know, probably worry a little bit because you're enjoying it so much. But other than that, don't forget to find some time to be with God this week. Don't forget to find a place of solitude so that you and God can have the conversation he's been wanting to have for a long time. Other than that, uh, we'll see you on Instagram. We'll see you on Facebook. We'll send you. We'll see you on email. Uh, and I may be seeing you on uh, Xbox Live or something. So we'll see you soon. And peace out. <laughs>